Hey guys, okay, so this is uh, probably one of the first videos in a series of videos we're doing on building our ICF house. Uh, so we're doing it a little bit different. Uh, some people do it this way, most people pour a footing. Uh, but since we were lucky, unlucky, I guess, uh, enough to be on solid rock, we elected to do no footing and just sort of scribe slash support the ICF on the rock. Uh, so we're in Ontario. We had to have this rock checked by a uh, geotechnical engineer just to make sure it was sound and everything, and it is. Uh, and then we just had to um, do some back and forth with the building department uh, and our engineer on just how exactly this was all going to work with the rebar and the pinning to the rock and all that. But that'll be different from area to area. I just want to show you the general idea of how we are placing this Nudura ICF foundation on the rock. So uh, what we're doing is I'm putting these wood blocks everywhere. Um, so you can see before the ICF goes on, they're like sort of everywhere. And uh, I've got them sort of strategically placed. Um, so for example, an eight foot ICF will sit in between there and this, these two blocks and those two blocks will catch the web that's 20 inches in from the one end and 20 inches in from the other end, all the way along. And then obviously places where you have like your common seam and stuff, um, they're gonna be staggered a little bit different way. I got a few more on the corners to support the corners. And so what basically those are is to allow us to have something uh, solid to screw the ICF to and level it for the first course. So down here, and all this has to do with elevations um, of the, in relation to the basement floor. So down here, there's only, you can see maybe an inch and a half, two inches underneath the Nudura. So I just screwed the Nudura directly to uh, the wood there through a web. I put two screws in each one uh, and that's on both sides. And that's how I got the first course level. Um, and then we're just going to drop concrete right in and we're not going to even fill that joint. I may put like a block in the middle here because if you see the wall moves back and forth uh, and just to stabilize it a bit. But in general, it's going to be open. So the concrete's going to come slamming down and just the way ICF works, it pushes equally on both sides in general. That's why I might put that that one block in the middle. Now up here, I haven't done it yet. Um, but up here, like I'll just use this corner block as an example. Again, because of how the blocks work out and the general topography of the rock. It's not going in right now on camera. Okay, so I put these exactly 11 and a half apart. So what I would do is I put the one on and then I'd use a sample piece, usually an eight footer. And then I put the other one on that way. I know they're going to go right back in. So up here, it's going to actually end up being again, because of the, the rock and the floor, it's going to be about five to six inches off the rock. So unless we get the perfect mix design, so like a four inch slump would be ideal. We were going to drop it down and then let it mushroom out um, and then go move on to doing some like piers and posts and things with while the concrete trucks and pump is here while that sets up. But gets a little bit sketchy doing that. Uh, if you have the wrong mix, if it's too uh, liquidy, It'll just keep flowing out and you won't be able to stop it and you're wasting concrete and you won't get a chance to fill the wall. So my plan here is, and I'll show you this as I do it, um, but my plan here is I'm going to have a 10 foot uh, two by fours or two by sixes because I have to use them for the framing of my house anyway. And I'll be able to keep them full length and I'm actually going to screw them to the inside here. And so they'll be sitting in here. And I'm going to use the, the laser level to get them perfectly level all the way along on both sides. So there's going to be a two by four or two by six going all the way down that way, all the way down that way with the bottom of it exactly where I want the bottom of the ICF to be. And then I'll go ahead and stacking it just like I'm stacking the ICF on a footing. Um, and then you might be thinking, well, you know, you're going to have a two by four right underneath your, your uh, wall. But really, it doesn't matter because this is just insulating foam. The down forces of your wall come straight down the wall, six inches wide, right down, and they transfer the load right to the rock. So just because I'm not letting the concrete bleed out of here in this area, it makes no difference because really, you know, you're going to have this little amount of concrete right here, and it's probably just going to break at that joint anyway once the pressures from the floor and roof and everything in the walls come down. Maybe, maybe not, but it's inconsequential whether concrete comes out of here or not. So that two by four 
or two by six is just going to stop that heavy flow. There's still going to be a gap underneath because it's, you know, it might have an inch, inch and a half, but the way concrete is, and if you get the right slump, it won't make it through even after vibration. And again, we'll let it set up a little bit and keep moving up the wall. So once I get all these on, or maybe as I'm doing it, I'll show you how that's going. And as opposed to how I did it down there, where it's really close to the rock, I'll already have all those two by fours or two by sixes on. So I can just go bang, 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 put all the bottom course on and not have to think about it. With these ones, I had to put, you know, put the foam down and then I had to use the, the laser level there and then level that and screw it, then level that and screw it, level that and screw it, level that, screw it. So it took a little bit longer, no big deal, but this will go quicker once the two by fours or two by six on. So stay tuned, we'll get back to it. Okay guys, so one day later, pretty rainy today um, so we got those in end of the day and then started stacking these on and so here we did end up going with uh, the two by sixes and the nice thing about this is these are 10 foot two by sixes you can use them for framing in your house or your uh, sill plate many different things so when you're doing forming you should also be thinking about what you can use lumber for later anytime we have an off cut it would be from lumber from a previous job or something like that um, so just keep that in mind but anyway this worked out pretty well you can see where the nudura is sitting now with the two by six we only have i don't know three quarters one inch gap all the way around and that will uh that won't allow any concrete to come out and even right there between the foam and the wood so that would be like a normal footing. That's how the foam would be sitting. And then we might just hit that with a couple spots of, uh, of foam, but I don't really think it's necessary. The foam is being supported on the inside with the webs from separating. So if anything, it would just be to keep it from rattling when the concrete goes down. But uh, yeah, so a little bit of a unique way of doing it. There's many people that do monopores. And when you do monopores, unless you're using like the fast foot system, you sort of got to be creative with your particular... Uh, ground conditions or excavation conditions um, so yeah I'll take you through this whole build as much as I can it takes time out of the day obviously to film so I'll just try to keep all the uh, boring stuff out of the way so, just walking around here this is where you can end the video if you're not doing an ICF house and you don't care and then here, so I got to do some steps in this today. I'll show you a step over on the other side. Got a window started there. Still got to cut it out. So this is how I do the windows. Oh, that's actually a patio door. Actually, that one's that one's not done. That's half one. Let me show you one that's done. So this is going to be approximately a 10-foot patio door. So I marked the center. That was the wrong mark. That's the right mark. So 9-foot, 1.5 from the outside. These are just the what the plans show. So 9-foot, 1.5. And then I do the width of my opening. So B is the uh, window buck. So we're using two by 12 pressure treated window bucks. That'll be the, the inside of it. And then the wood is there. And then that's L for lintel. So lintel is the actual clear span between the concrete of this patio door. So when you're doing all your lintel math, or if the engineer's doing that for your stirrups and your uh, your rebar above, that's the dimension that's important, the lintel. Uh, so then you might be wondering why it's stepped here. Top of my basement floor is right here, which is where the patio door is gonna sit. So I didn't want concrete going to the outside. So this is a thermal break of two and five eighths on the outside. Concrete floor will be in here like this. And then it's stepped down four inches from this point to this point. And that just obviously represents the thickness of the basement floor. So when I make my window buck, because obviously you're not pouring the floor when you're pouring the walls. When I make the window buck, I'm just gonna cut the bottom of the window buck out to that shape right there, and then fill it up, screed the concrete off in the wall to this height. And what I might do is I might put some rebar dowels sticking out so that they grab when, they, when, they, when we pour the floor. So just keep that all nice and strong and maybe a piece of rebar right across the front right here to stop any cracking because there's a lot of back and forth about what happens here uh, because you're creating a tongue it's called where the floor comes out and then you have a tongue and then it has a tendency to break right there but I mean we're on rock here this area I don't think it'll be an issue one other thing you could do 
that I thought about doing is you could you do do the pour like I said uh, and then pour somehow with one when you got the pump truck here pour a threshold out of concrete but that has a break right here um, or it's all timing uh, based right it depends on what you're doing but or you could pour the whole thing and then after the concrete set up you could do a saw cut right through here but i mean you're going to see that in your floor but if you have concern about it breaking there it'd be nicer if it broke on the cut you made versus the uh just breaking wherever it wants and then you know you're gonna have flooring probably it's your basement so if you're not finishing right away you're gonna have to look at it but you got flooring it's not gonna be a big deal so that's a good way of doing that and then yeah i just like probably gonna figure out something for the garage door too obviously the garage door you have a vehicle going over it so you can't just leave raw foam but i got some ideas for that that i'll show you guys so yeah we got our bottom two pieces of 10m right there they they go 24 inches past the lintel on the bottom that's the just the main rebar in the wall uh, because it's a walkout basement the rebar is in the middle and then on the backfilled areas it'll be on the inside since the wall is under tension and okay so yeah just getting going talking here so this is the last thing i'll show you in this video so i just scribed this to the rock uh that shouldn't need additional bracing i did put foam glue in there but you can see there's a web there and a web there and there isn't four inches of foam past that web so there shouldn't be any blowouts happening uh, but we'll see maybe i'll i'll uh, support that and because this wall is going to be 14 feet when it's all said and done when we're pouring it so it's you know it's not the biggest wall ever ever but we're definitely going to need some support down at the bottom and yeah i think that's it oh from doing this scribing uh, a couple different ways you just slide the block close and then you scribe it and by holding a level right you hold a level and then you mark how far you want and you just basically transfer that rock mark but i found this thing on amazon i've had it for years and i use it for different things it's just a piece of rubber and it like bends but it stays where you bend it it's pretty neat it was like nothing it's like a dollar probably more now but you just put it on the rock and it's made for this it's got like nice smooth edges and then you literally just transfer it to to the foam and cut it out and you end up with a perfect cut like that so anyway thank you for watching please subscribe it helps me out